So then guys, today's video is a buyer's guide or an upgrade guide to the new M3 family of MacBook Pro. So this is the M3, the M3 Pro and the M3 Max. And essentially, I'm going to try my best to help you out if you should upgrade to one of these new families of MacBooks if you currently have an old MacBook from years ago or even quite recently and the priority if you should upgrade. Now you can see here, I've got a chart right here. And as you can see on that chart, it shows you that we have a five to one. So what I'm basically saying here, if you are a priority five, it basically means you need to upgrade your MacBook as soon as possible. If you are, say, a priority one, you probably don't need to update your MacBook at all. And you could wait a good couple more years to do that. And you get the idea in between basically means that, yeah, maybe you should upgrade or maybe you shouldn't. But without further ado, guys, let's now go over to this chart. And like I'll repeat again, this is my own opinions if you should upgrade. And let's have a look then. So then to explain this chart to you, what I have is I have the MacBook M3. We also have the M3 Pro and we also have the M3 Max. So obviously, these are the MacBook Pro family. Now, obviously, you're going to say straight away for the M3 Pro and the M3 Max, you can get a 14 and 16 inch model of this. But I'm not going to be covering the size. The size, I believe, is your preference here of what you want to get. Because at the end of the day, some people want a really powerful machine, but in a smaller body. But again, other people actually want, say, a bigger body MacBook Pro, but they also want it to be quite weak too. A bit like what I've got here with this MacBook Air. This is the MacBook Air M2. And yeah, I love it with a large display, but I don't need it to be over powerful because I do have a more powerful Mac 2. You get the idea here. So then, starting out with the pre-2017 MacBooks. And the first one we got here is the MacBook Air or the MacBook Air, depending on where you are from the world. In Britain, we called it an Air. So for the rest of this video, I'm saying Air because that's the way we say it. But back to the actual chart here. So with this MacBook Air that you might have purchased, if you bought it before 2017, or even if you say you got yourself a second-hand one or a pre-owned one, and it actually dates as a 2017 machine or older, it definitely needs an upgrade. The main reason is you're probably still on macOS Ventura at the moment, and it means that you cannot upgrade to macOS Sonoma, which is the latest version of all the security updates and things like this. Don't get me wrong, Apple's still rolling out some of the macOS um, sort of Ventura updates to some 2016 machines and the odd 2017 machines, but there's not going to be many after this year coming. So I would prioritize, especially if you have an even older machine, say you have a 2012, or even say 2015, you need to upgrade. So you can imagine where this is going. If you've got this type of MacBook Air, you need to probably get yourself a MacBook Pro M3. Now, obviously, you could get yourself another MacBook Air, but we're talking about a MacBook Pro here. And this is why he clicks on this video, because it's a MacBook Pro upgrade guide and buyer's guide, not a MacBook Air one. So we got that there. Next of all, we have the MacBook Pro. And again, if this is before 2017, I would probably say because you have that bit more of a boost and power and things like that, I'm actually going to stick this probably in the middle right here as a priority. You might be happy with just having a normal M3 model, but if you had like a really, really specced out, say a 2017 MacBook Pro, the 16 inch model for 15.4 even, sorry, and got 16 inch back then, uh, you may want to have maybe that 14 inch MacBook Pro, or 16 inch MacBook Pro, but with an M3 Pro, and you'll definitely see a for performance there. And again, guys, I'll just say this again, this is my own opinions on this. Then after that, what we have is we have the pre-2020 Intel MacBooks. So this is before the Apple Silicon journey started. So this is any MacBook that came out really in 2018, 2019, and even some of 2020, because we did actually get some MacBooks at the beginning of 2020, and some at the end with the new Apple Silicon. But if you fit into this journey, this is for you. So with these ones, I would actually say because you can run Sonoma, your time is running out. I am going to say that now. Time is really, really running out for you in the sense of that you probably only got about another year or so of upgrades. You're going to get this Sonoma. Probably next year, you might not even get the latest version of macOS. So with this, if you've got a MacBook Air again, I would priority that I'd probably say you're number four here um, in getting yourself the MacBook M3. 
So definitely looking to consider getting that one. Also, if you have, say, a MacBook Pro, what is a 13-inch model, so this is the one with the touch bar too, It'll definitely be a touch bar model, and you're looking to get an upgrade, I would personally vouch for getting yourself, say, an M3 Pro model here. 14 or 16 inch, you may want a bigger screen, or you may want something of a similar screen size. So I'd put it there. Then also, if you've got yourself one of those big daddies, let's say you've got one of those Intel i9 16 inch MacBook Pros that were out, for example, the last Intel one. I would definitely probably say you should be looking to getting yourself obviously a bigger model probably still or maybe maybe you want a 14 inch but you probably want m3 max and that priority is quite high because like i said support is running out slow slowly soon so it's going to go very very soon probably in the next 18 months or so then after that guys we've got the m1 family and this is where things get a little bit more trickier now i'm going to start with the m1 macbook now I just want to say this with the M1 chipset. And this is the normal M1 chipset. It is still a fantastic chipset device. And it is great. And it will be for many years to come. But if you want something a little bit more powerful with a bit more oomph inside it, you want maybe a better screen and things like this, I would personally not go to an M3 MacBook Pro. I personally actually go to here an M3 Pro MacBook Pro. So yeah, I'd probably go for that 14 inch model because you probably want the smaller one on that one. And I'd go for this model instead. And it's the same with the MacBook Pro. Again, this is the one with the M1 chipset inside it. Nothing wrong with the M1 chipset, but if you just want a bit more power, I would not upgrade to an M3 MacBook Pro from this model. No, I would actually go to an M3 Pro instead. So I'm going to stick that there, but you can see the priority. It's a two. Like I say, it doesn't really need doing, but if you do want a bit more power, maybe you can do it. And you will notice some differences there. If you look at some Geekbench scores or even other benchmark scores, or even things like this, you know, exporting videos and other sort of ways, you will notice there will be, it'll be far quicker to have an M3 Pro over a standard M1. So I'm sticking those right there. Next of all, then, I would say then if you've got the 14-inch MacBook Pro um, with the M1 Pro, you can imagine, again, it's not really going to be a big priority for you to upgrade at all. So I'm sticking it, I'm going to stick it a bit more lower here. I'm going to stick it in the, probably in the 1 and 2. It's just not going to be enough. You do not need to upgrade an M3 Pro to an M1 Pro. You're not going to see it. You could go to an M3 Max on M1 Pro and you will see a bit of a difference there. But I would say give it at least another year personally. I would wait to M4 series. So I'm going to stick that there. And the same again, if you've got yourself, say, the 16 inch or let's say if you've got a um, M1 Max chipset, same thing again. I'm sticking it here you don't really need to upgrade. It is, it, you're just really not going to see a difference between M1 Max and M3 Max to make it a really worthy upgrade. That wow factor we love to have when we go, look at the speed difference I'm getting. It will be quicker. And I'm not going to deny that. But what I will say is if you want to feel that big difference, I'd wait another year personally. And then it moves on to the M2 MacBook family. And this is where things get interesting too. So if you've got the M2 MacBook Air or Air or whatever you want to call it, just like what I've got here, I've got the bigger one and the smaller one. So I'm going to say both sizes again. I would say personally, if you're going to upgrade, it's going to be here. It's going to be to a MacBook M3. And I'm just going to stick it there because I don't think I'm going to fit everything else in, as you'll see. You just don't need to upgrade. It's a very, very low priority to upgrade for you right now. It's just no point at all in power, that is. So obviously, if you want that better screen, you want those better features, um, you know, of the mini LED display, and obviously you want those extra ports and better sound and so on and so forth, comes with the pros of getting yourself a MacBook Pro, then yeah, possibly upgrade but then i would be saying why didn't you get yourself say an m2 pro before <laughs> you know it's too new it's far far too new so it's super low priority and it's the same here as well with the macbook pro so this is the one with the m2 chipset that came out same thing with that touch bar Blech. don't like the touch bar but if you want to get it upgraded I'd stick it here and I'd get yourself an M3 Pro over the M2 standard. And again, you will see those differences, better screen and things like this. Again, in performance wise, support wise, M2 is going to be supported for a long, long time. So you don't need to worry about anything there. 
Then moving over to an M2 Pro, uh, MacBook Pro. So this one again, it's just not needed. You just don't need to upgrade at the moment. I'm sticking it here. This does fit in that number one box. I'm just trying to fit it in here. I would probably say here, it, if you were going to upgrade, I'd be upgrading to M3 Max. I'm not even going to put it in the M3 Pro box because M2 Pro to M3 Pro, no, you're just not going to see a difference. So if you do want yourself a 14 or 16 inch M3 Max, I don't know why you bought the M2 Pro in the last eight, nine months since it's come out, but you get the idea. I stick it here. It does not need to be upgraded. And you can imagine the same. If I could put it in the lowest amount of space possible, it would be the M2 Max. It's just really, really not needed to be upgraded. That's why it's even now coming up the table here, as you can see. I would not be upgrading this at all. Again, same question. Why have you got it? And why are you even looking at an M3 Max? The difference you're going to notice is going to be hardly anything. It's, yep, yeah, obviously each, each new generation comes with better speeds, better ray tracing, better 3D caching, all the rest of it. And next year when we get the M4, Apple will have something new again. It happens all the time. There's always going to be a chip that was better and better and better and they're building on the foundation. That's what just happens. But to get that full sort of upgrading feeling i would personally not bother upgrading at all if you have any much of the m2 family and that's why yeah i'm leaving them where they are in that chart but there we go guys like i say this is my own opinions here on this chart what you've just seen and it's up to you if you want to upgrade but this is what i would be doing personally like i will say again you know, one of the big things a lot of people are going to be saying here, obviously M2, you're not going to upgrade. And M1, Matt, why have you stuck them up a little bit higher? It's more to do with the fact of the actual designs of those models, I would more say. That MacBook Air and also that MacBook Pro with the M1 chipsets in it. They're a bit of an older design. You're getting more ports. You're getting a better screen. You're getting those sort of things. And if you notice, I put them in the M3 Pro category, as you can see right here, not actually in the MacBook pro m3 normal category because i just feel you're not going to feel that big boost enough and that's and like i said it's a number two it's not even a big priority but i think the main point is is what's going on at the top of this chart here if you're on intel macbooks you can see anything 2017 and older you need to upgrade as soon as possible i'd recommend and then if you are say a pre-2020 the last of the intel macbooks of ones before the m1 journey started I would consider upgrading in the next 18 months or so. If you upgrade now, cool. If you upgrade in 18 months, yeah, get it done. You get the idea. But like I'll say again, keep repeating myself, these are my own opinions here. Doesn't mean I'm right, doesn't mean it's wrong. This is just exactly what I would do if you own one of these machines. And with that, guys, too, it's time to wrap up this video. So I hope this upgrade guide or this buyer's guide has helped you out. And if you have enjoyed watching this video, please do press the like button. And also at the same time, when you hear the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons, please also make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.